Then again, however, our archer does really have a very good bow to work off of. That bow of Inferno is very nice. And the Percival bow, whenever we manage to find it finally, it will make a very, very wonderful addition. The reason why is because, as you may have remembered hearing earlier from the person who talked about Percival, the bow is like launching a fireball with every single attack. And then you add to it the fact that there's two arrows, that means, for, that means there's going to be two fireballs coming out of the bow end. And they'll knock the people back even further, which is very nice. Okay, lots of magical and searing brews. Um, I'm going to see who has the lowest magic resistance. That'd be him. Can't have our mage having a low magic resistance. Where's the common sense in that? Also, do I have... Yeah, I have torchlight going. <laughs> huh. Looks like a little doorway out there. Whoa! It's not a doorway, it's a ghost! Another ghost! The ghost of Balthazar. Werewolves. I was a guest at Lord Spindler's Manor when it was attacked by a band of werewolves that had tunneled in from the mountains. I fought my way back down the tunnels they had created, hoping to escape. Eventually, they cornered me, and I was killed at this very spot. Pearl of Purity? In my fight, I managed to hide the Pearl of Purity in these caverns. The Pearl will both protect you from the curse of the werewolves, and will also destroy the altar of the wolf if the Pearl touches it. That should free everyone afflicted by the curse that these werewolves have caused. The pearl is at the end of the cavern, across from this one. Please, do me one favor. Return the pearl to Wilbur Humphrey. He is the lord in charge of the paladins, and the pearl belongs with him. Quest? The werewolf leader possesses the pearl of putrescence, the opposite of my pearl of purity. With this pearl, he has been able to cause the curse. I was never able to kill him in my retreat. I will be able to rest in peace, knowing that he has been defeated. Alright, it seems like we have our first quest. Well, our second and first quests, actually. First off, we gotta find this Pearl of Purity, and with that, take it back to Lord Wilbur Humphrey. Then, after that, we need to find the Pearl of, um... Putrescence, I believe it is, and return it to Balthazar, and Balthazar should do his little magic voodoo on it and shatter it, I assume. We kind of need it anyways to open up the, open up this place. <clears throat> open up this place. Without the pearl, that door ain't gonna open. And as you can see, if you go down this little wolf mouth, there is a door at the end, but it ain't opening. So that's what we need to do for right now. First things first, find the Pearl of Purity. If you find the Pearl of Purity, we'll be able to survive the curse. I'm not sure if the curse is anything actual or not, or if it'll protect us from the disease the werewolves have. Whatever the case, it behooves us to get it first. They ain't dying. There we go. And yet more ooze. Blech. Sorry, for just some reason it reminds me of playing NetHack. And it reminds me because, um... Well, one of the end bosses, well, not an end boss, but one of the bosses that you fight in the game is a demon named Jubilex, and it's taken straight out of Dungeons and Dragons. It's basically the demon lord of slimes, and he's gross and nasty, and he attacks your character and net hack by swallowing him whole. 
he's very easily defeated if you have a wand of digging. Basically, it's like putting a depth char or it's basically like putting a satchel charge right up next to right up next to his stomach lining and blowing him apart like that. But it's very nasty because he inflicts illness upon you and it kills your character outright within like I forget what it is, 10 20 some turns. It was just very annoying. I remember that much. Sorry, I just... I sort of can't get net hack out of my mind. Because I spent like three days playing the game only to die off right near the very end. It was over something very stupid, too. It was the fact I didn't know that you had to stand on the stairwell up to prevent liches from running upstairs. Because whenever you'd hit them, they'd teleport away. And whenever they teleport away, they'd always teleport away to the stairs leading up previous to the previous level. And then they'd come chase you down. What you just had to do is just stand on the stairwell, and they'd teleport back to you and you'd kill them off every single time. Now, I didn't know that, however, and my character died. Oh, well. Fireball. Right. And yeah, we're just plugging them full of arrows pretty much. That's a nice thing about having day of protection like this. Most of them won't even most of those attacks they fire at you, they won't even hurt you. And then with the bow of infernos that we have, the only problem is, is that the arrows, as you might have been noticing, some of the arrows, uh, whenever you fight the slime, they won't go low enough. The bottom one will hit them, but the one over top, or the one the second arrow that you fire off, it'll go straight over them, it'll skim over top. Just something to keep in mind. And I don't think there's anything out this. We find a pearl. That it would be the Pearl of Purity, I believe. Yep. And with this, we set it on the altar. We open the altar up. It's kind of weird how we just found the pearl and it magically flew into our hands. Make sure that you're not holding anything by the time you go down there, because if you do, whatever is in your inventory is just going to get mercilessly destroyed. Fortunately, it's hard to destroy the pearl because there's nothing else down there to worry about. And we set the pearl on the altar. And the door opens. And they greet us with two heads on a stick. That's just gross. One has his eyeball dangling. That That's not a guy, that's a girl. Yuck. Blech. I'm sorry, Arp. Somebody, what the? And let's cast Cure Disease before these two start growing hair and shouting at the moon. Yikes. 